Good morning, friends. Uh, I am Professor Sheetal Oru. I will be covering the topic of tachymetry. This will be our third lesson in the lesson of tachymetry. We have seen that tachymetry is a topic which is uh, indirect surveying. It is a topic where we try to cover the distances and elevations or we calculate or compute the distance and elevations without the help of any direct methods or modes of uh, measurement like tape or chain or thing, other things. So, we have already seen the uh, fixed hair method of tachymetry, we have already seen the principles of the working of the tachymetry, uh, we have seen the movable hair method which, are, which were both the stadia methods. Uh, today, we will be looking at the non-stadia methods. In the non-stadia methods, we will be covering two major topics, uh, one is uh, subtense and tangential uh, system and also we will be covering auto reduction tachymeters. Auto reduction tachymeters are also called as self uh, reduction tachymeters or direct reading tachymeters. Now, uh, we, when we look at the overview, uh, the, uh, if, if you remember, we have covered tachymetry definition and principles, tachymetry instrument, the systems of tachymetry and the uh, stadia method which is fixed and mobile air. Today, we will be focusing on the non stadia method using ordinary theodolite. So, uh, in this non theodolite uh, system, non sorry, uh, non stadia method of uh, tachymetry, we will be focusing on the methods of surveying, uh, which is based on the principle that uh, telescope without stadia diaphragm are used. That is, there is no special diaphragm which normally is uh, present in the uh, stadia method. So, it is a normal ordinary theodolite which we will be using, but we will be applying certain uh, system or technique, so that we still be will be able to cover the distance and elevations. So, the first one is the tangential method. Now, as you can see the no stadia is required, this method is used only when the theodolite is simple and transit type. This method, uh, in this method readings at two different points on a staff are taken uh, with the cross, uh, horizontal crosshair and the staff will consist of two vanes uh, or targets at 2 to 3 meter apart. So, basically uh, in this method there will be two sightings or two observations which we do, one is at the uh, top target or top vein and one is at the bottom target or bottom vein. Now, when we are doing these two sightings, we will be taking two observations, the one at the top of the target we will be, uh, denomin we are, we will be uh, denominating it as uh, theta or theta 1 being a vertical angle at the top hair and uh, sorry not top, top hair, top vein. And the second one is uh, theta 2, which is the vertical angle made at the uh, bottom vein or bottom target. Uh, so, there uh, when we uh, talk about these methods, uh, tangential method are, has got three uh, basic uh, conditions or uh, cases. Uh, one is both the angles are angles of elevation, second is both the angles are angles of depression and in third case is when one is one is the angle of elevation and one is the angle of depression. Now, this, this, uh, this can be the uh, real uh, life situation or uh, practical situation where uh, we want to we want to calculate the distance and elevations and this distance and elevation can ha happen in any conditions like if the object may be at the top of a building at a very high level. So, in, the, in that case the angles will be elevation or the target will be at a very uh, low level in a depression in a depression so both the angles may be depressions and it may be on more or less a level ground where one angle can be a elevation and another can be a depression so when we go to the derivation of this you can see that the first case where both the angles of elevation are there then a and b represent the staff uh, intercept which we called as the 2 to 3 meter which are the top and bottom veins and V represents the vertical intercept from the line of sight of the instrument which is horizontal to the bottom of the target vein. Now, here the two sightings which I mentioned earlier is uh, to the vertical angle theta 1 which is to the top of the target and second is uh, theta 2 which is at the bottom of the target. And uh, other things uh, which you can see in the figure is height of instrument which is denoted by H i and the horizontal distance from the object to the target one which is denoted by d or uh, distance for distance. Now, if you look at the uh, figure, uh, we start with the derivations, uh, we simply prepare two equations 1 plus uh, v plus s, uh, if you look at it is a simple geometrical uh, uh, what do you say, uh, derivation of the figure 
which, which we are showing uh, using trigonometry. So, if you look at the figure v plus s is equal to d tan theta 1 is one equation. If you look at uh, the figure for tan theta 1 d tan theta 1 v plus s will be the intercept uh, to the top of the target and in for the second case to the bottom of the target it will be d tan theta 2 which will be equal to the vertical intercept v. Now, solving both this equation we get an equation for the distance d which is equal to s upon tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2. So, here s intercepts s stands for the staff intercept which is known it can be 2 meters or it can be 3 meters and for v uh, we have to just simply substitute v in uh, in in the either of the first or two, equa uh, two equations which we already derived at the top here you can see uh, it can be uh, v plus uh, s is equal to d tan theta 1 or v is equal to d tan theta 2. So, what you see here is the uh, substitution of the value of d in the second equation and once we obtain the uh, vertical intercept v, now the RL of the object can be obtained, it will be equal to RL of the HI uh, added to the known RL of the point P at the instrument position plus the vertical intercept minus the uh, height to the bottom of the target. Now, these are the param. Now, here you can see that h is h should be known to you being a bottom target, it, it will be known to you. V is what we compute, V the horizontal uh, vertical intercept is something which we compute. Okay? Right. So, when we move on to the next equation, you will understand that uh, we move to the second uh, case here. Okay. So, when I move to the second case, says, uh, just let me see what is uh, happening, okay. Move to the second case, yeah. We have seen this first case. And now we move to the second case. Yeah. Now in this second case, you can see that both the angles are angles of depression. So for that, the derivation has now uh, got converted uh, into d is equal to s upon tan theta two minus tan theta one. Earlier it was d uh, is equal to s upon tan theta one. Since the position has reversed, both being uh, depressions, the formula has also changed. Now derivation is in front of you. It is a simple derivation looking at the geometry of the figure. Uh, similarly, for the third condition, now third condition is such that uh, neither it is depression nor it is uh, elevation, but one vertical angle that is theta 1 is elevation and the second uh, vertical angle that is theta 2 is a depression. So, for this uh, the derivation uh, uh, turns out to d is equal to s upon tan theta 1 plus tan theta 2. And uh, that means there is uh, the d can be over arrived at if we know both the angles. Now, if you observe uh, all these three uh, equations, what you can come to what comes to our mind is that uh, on the field when we do this uh, practical or when we do this uh, specific uh, observations, we have to note down two major things. Uh, one is the uh, vertical angles made at the top and bottom of the target winds which we have to note down and we should be uh, we should be aware of what is the staff intercept s and also uh, we should be aware of what should be the what is the height of the bottom of the target from the ground level uh, at point q which is the second point of observations so we are having known that we can obtain the distance and we can obtain the vertical intercept and having obtained the vertical intercept we can also calculate the radius level of the object being given the reduced level of the instrument position is known to you. Okay. Now, we come to the next method which is the horizontal base method. Now, why it is called as horizontal base? Because as you can see in the figure, the base of the, the base of the target is horizontal. Okay. If you want, I can show you the next picture which will uh, make you Clear, which will clear you the concept. You can see here the, the object is not held, the, the staff is not held, but there is a horizontal bar or a horizontal base. Uh, the point where it has been mentioned as V 
is the point where the uh, staff uh, intercepts will be there. So, the intercept will not be in the vertical plane, but they are in the horizontal plane unlike the earlier one which we saw. But here also for observation, we will be using the tangential uh, like, like in the tangential method, we will be using the theodolite, ordinary theodolite, we will not be using the uh, tachymeter or a stadia method. Okay. Okay. So, if you look at this sketch, you will understand that the horizontal base method consists of observations made on two targets, one to the left and one to the right of the observer and we measure the horizontal angle which is given by, uh, here it has been mentioned as theta, let us call it some by some other name say phi. Theta is a term which we always use for vertical angle, okay. Uh, since the equation al also uses theta, let us go by theta. So, you can see that uh, the line of sight uh, which has been uh, shown by the figure uh, line p q is perpendicular perpendicular to the uh, base which is the staff intercept that is the horizontal rod. So, the formula d is equal to half s cot theta by 2. How did we arrive that? If you simply see look at the figure the theta is theta by 2. Okay. So, for tan theta by 2 it will be s by 2 upon d. right? So, d will be equal to s by 2 into uh, upon tan theta by 2 which is nothing but s by 2 into cot theta by 2. So, it is a de derivations which are not gone into detail, it has been directly summarized for you, but it is a very simple calculations which we can do also. So, if you look at, look at the, uh, this uh, formula, the distance can be obtained if the staff intercept S is known, again it can be 2 to 3 meter like in the case of a tangential method and the theta is the horizontal angle in this case uh, made from the first target to the second target. Okay, moving on, uh, we will be moving on now to the we have seen this sketch. So, it is also known as horizontal shaft. It is used for measuring both horizontal as well as vertical. It is used for normally short distances. It is a horizontal uh, metal bar on which two targets are fixed. It can be 0 0.3 to 3 meter as I discussed. Okay. Lastly, in this uh, session, we will be focusing on the auto reduction tachymeters, which are also called as direct treating tachymeters. Now, why they are called as auto reduction tachymeters? Because they will be automatically reducing your calculations. They will be directly reading the tachymeters. They will be making the computation part of your work simpler by no cost, no tan, no um, calculations for uh, cos square theta or sin 2 theta or anything you simply have to use some multiplication factor like 100 or 10 or 20 as the case may be as the specific scientists who have developed this special tachymeters. They are special tachymeters basically. They will be having special diaphragms and that is why they are known as auto reduction tachymeter. We will be, uh, we'll be seeing looking at them one by one. So, in this session we will be uh, discussing three types of uh, special tachymeters, uh, auto reduction tachymeters. One is the hammer fennel tachymeter and uh, second is the Jeff Cotts direct trading tachymeter and third is the Zipsis. Now, when I pronounce Zipsis, the S is silent, the Zipsis uh, direct trading tachymeter. Okay. So, the first one is Jeff Cotts direct trading tachymeter. Now, you can see in this uh, tachymeter, that is uh, the what you see on the right hand side is the diaphragm. In the diaphragm, there are three veins. One is the vein. Uh, at the center like in your stadia method which is fixed, it is called as a fixed pointer and there are two other veins, one is called as the elevation pointers and one is called as the distance pointer. Veins in the sense they are the uh, crosshairs you can say, they are special crosshairs in the diaphragm. So, your job while observation what do you do? When you, you have to keep the uh, staff at the object end and you have to bisect your fixed pointer to any round value of the staff. When you do that, the elevation pointer and the distance pointer are, uh, they are automatically they move uh, from their position based on the height of the elevation or depression and based of the distance of the object from the, uh, from the instrument. Based on that, since they are automatically moving, you do not have to do anything. You, your job is to just make a note of the observation of the elevation pointer and the bottom pointer with respect to the fixed pointer. So, I have used a simple calculation to explain this. Suppose there are three staff readings, uh, suppose the elevation pointer is at 2.35, the distance pointer is at uh, 0.75, uh, 
uh, okay here uh, the horizontal distance is uh, given by 2.35 minus 1.15 where 2.35 is a distance pointer okay and uh, 1.15 is the fixed air pointer so the difference between that multiplied by uh, value of 100 will give you the horizontal distance in this case it is 100 so same can be so the third line if you see it is for the vertical distance the vertical distance will be the distance from the elevation pointer and the fixed pointer the difference that uh, between them multiplied by 10 so here you get the vertical distance directly now we move on to the second case which is called as the hammer funnels auto reduction tachymeter now this tachymeter consists of four curves which are seen in the field of view this is also a part of the diaphragm let me tell you what you see here is nothing but the inside the diaphragm now here there are four curves n curve e curve and there are two curves uh, representing for the vertical angles uh, one is the d and one is a small d and one is the capital d now your job in this uh, while using this instrument is to use this diaphragm and bisect the any one reading on the rod and match it or coincide it with the zero pointer which is the n pointer once you have done that the e pointer which represents the horizontal pointer and the d or capital d pointer which represents the vertical pointer they automatically move a particular to a particular position based on the horizontal distance and the vertical elevation or depression your job is to not to do anything but simply to bring the bottom pointer to a particular uh, value it can coincide with some rounded of value once you have done that you have to just multiply the uh, multiplying constant for the distance curve will be 100 like in the case of the Jeff Cotts. So, you have to just see the difference between the n curve and the e curve and multiply it by 100. And for the vertical angle, if it is more than, uh, it is used to measure angles up to 14, 14 plus or minus 14 degree, if it is, we use uh, capital D. And when you use, in that case, the multiplying constant is 10. And if we use small d, the multiplying constant is 20. It is for angles above 14 degree and below 47 degree. I think here also I have given one example so that you can see. So, right hand side you can see clearly that what we have done is that we have brought the uh, zero pointer to a particular value okay here. So, this is the zero pointer which you see and this is uh, the horizontal uh, pointer. So, we have brought the horizontal uh, we, we, we simply bring the uh, zero pointer that is n pointer to some value and the horizontal pointer and the elevation pointer are automatically coming in place. So, you have to just multiply the 100 and uh, 10 for the horizontal and vertical distances respectively. Okay. Lastly, we come to the last of the auto reduction tachymeter which is called which is denominated by Zipsis direct reading tachymeter. Now, what you see on the left hand side of your screen is a uh, value of the tan th of the vertical angles tan, uh, tan inverse of the vertical angles. Okay and uh, what you see on the right hand side is the diaphragm. So, again your job here is to bring your diaphragm to some certain uh, fixed value and then the tans and uh, automatically calculated. So, this is used for the uh, tangential system of tachymetry where also we use the tan. So, again to get the horizontal distance we multiply it by 100 as the case may be. Okay. So, uh, today we conclude for the uh, lesson number 3 where we have covered, uh, what did we cover? We covered the uh, non-stadia method of tangential, non-stadia method of tachymetry that is the tangential method, the substance bar method and we also moved on to some special instruments which were called as the auto reduction tachymeters and direct reading tachymeters. Okay, at the end of the uh, unit uh, 1 that is on tachymetry, we will be moving on to the lesson number 4. Uh, in the next section where we will be focusing on EDM and uh, the enhancement done on to the EDM which is called by the name of total station. Thank you.